This is the second video for section 11.5. Um, we're going to start with example 2, but before we go to example 2, I want to go back to the instructions for graphing that least square regression line because the instructions I went through in the first video where I talked about the store required equation, that is for a TI-84. Those instructions, you might have already figured out, will not work for a TI-83. So I wanted to go through what you're going to do with a TI-83. Unfortunately, I don't have a TI-83, but I can kind of give you an idea, I think. So we're going to start the same way with the stat over to calc. I use this little right arrow here to say I'm going over to calc. And then the 4, the linear regression. And then on the TI-84, you get this screen. On the TI-83, you're not going to get that. You're going to get this, something that says linear regression, A plus B squared. And where it says this L1, L2, comma, you have to input that. So if you want to copy or insert these directions right here or write yourself a note that you have to type this part in. And the way you're going to do that is, let me just clear, let me just clear out of here. Uh, so if you look down on your keypad, you can see these little L1, L2, and this button above the 7 is the comma. So when you get to this step where you have to input L1, you have to tell the calculator to use L1 and L2. You're going to do second number one key and get L1. Then you're going to do comma. Then you're going to do L2. Whoops. Hang on, let me quit that again. So comma. Then I'm going to do second L2. And then you also have to put in another comma hanging off the end. Okay, so on the TI-83 you're going to put all that in right next to where it says linear regression AB. So you're going to put L1 comma L2 comma and then you're going to hit enter. And that's kind of... Um, no, then you're not going to hit enter. Then you're going to hit VARS. So this step here actually goes in right here before the VARS. So this is what it looks like. Input L1, comma, L2, comma, then you're going to hit VARS, then you're going to go over to Y VARS, then you're going to hit Enter. So try that on the TI-83. It might be helpful to copy these on your notes. Okay, let's look at example two. So here's example two. I, like in the other examples, have already put the data in my calculator. So I recommend you pause the video and do the same. See, there's my data that matches up with this list. And then let's see what they're asking me to do. First thing they're asking me to do is construct a scatter plot, which I did right here. However, I don't have my x and y axis labeled and you should always have those labeled. So x is sprint time and y is distance. So scatter plot, remember we want to do second stat plot and then make sure everything is as we need it and then if we hit zoom 9 we get our scatter plot. And so I transferred it onto the paper. Okay, now it says what is the value of the correlation coefficient? <clears throat> so that is stat over to calc, uh, line item 4 there, or menu item 4, and then enter, 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 and there is my information. There's my correlation coefficient, negative 0.838, and also I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to write an equation of a line, so there's my A and B. Remember, A is your slope, B is your y-intercept. So part, so there's my correlation coefficient. What does this value tell, tell you about the relationship between the student's sprint time and long jump distances? Well, you can look at your scatter plot and see that it's a negative relationship. And I would say 
They're fairly close together. And uh, our value in the 0.8 range, I would describe as strong. So I would say the relationship is strong negative. So kids that are fast runners are also good jumpers. Because remember, as sprint time increases, wait a minute, as sprint time increases, yes, so sprint time increasing means they're slower runners and their jump distance decreases, so they're not jumping as far. Up here where we have short sprint times, we have high jump distances. Okay, then part D says, find the equation. For the least square regression line, round to three decimal places. So I jotted down my A and B over here. And I can also get them off my calculator. There they are. A is negative 45.743. B is 414.786. So the equation of my line is negative 45, 45.743x. So that's my slope. Plus my y-intercept is 414.786. So that is the equation of my line. Three decimal places, please. What is the slope? Well, that's always the coefficient on my x. So my slope is negative 45.743. And what does that mean? Notice in this example, we didn't give it to you. We're asking you to write it. So remember, slope, you always need to talk about a single increase in the x value. So this means that for each additional second, this is my x-axis, it takes to run the sprint, those are my inputs, my explanatory variable, comma, we predict, it's important to use the word predict because the least squared regression line gives you a prediction we predict the runner to jump negative. Sounds weird to talk about a negative. 45.7.3 inches. Actually, I'm going to take the negative out. I'm going to say 45.7.3 inches less. A little strange to talk about in the context of this problem, but that that's what slope means. For a single increase in x, y will decrease by 45.743. And then part f says, what is the y-intercept? Y-intercept is 414, oh, let's write that correctly, 414.786. What does this mean? This means that if a runner if a runner uh, finishes race or finishes sprint, maybe that would be better, finishes sprint in zero seconds, which really doesn't make sense in this context, we predict they can jump. four hundred and fourteen point seven eighty six inches. That's a symbol for inches. So mm, it's hard. This is doesn't make sense really for this problem. You can't run a sprint in zero seconds, but that is what the y-intercept means. So why is that okay? Well, we're not probably going to pay a lot of attention to when x is zero. We would use the least square regression line more for predicting jump distances for different race times. Okay, part G says, use your least square regression equation to predict how far a student will jump if he or she runs a 40 yard sprint in 6.5 seconds. So this means x equals 6.5. So I want to take my equation, same one, I slide it up there so you can see it, 45.743x plus 
414.786 and I want to substitute in place of X I want to put that 6.5 so this is what I'd have in place of X I'm putting in 6.5 and then I need to multiply that all out and what I get is 117.4 457 inches. So this is how far we predict they would jump if they're able to sprint in 6.5 seconds. Make sure you put units on all of these answers. Why? The output is in inches. One student in the class can run 40 yards in 6.5 seconds and jumped a distance of 139 inches. Was your prediction too high or too low? So they ran 6.5 seconds, which is the same time we had up here. But they actually jumped 139 inches. And we predicted they would only jump 117 inches. So our prediction was too low by 139 minus 117.457 so that would be by 21.544 inches okay so prediction was too low by 22.544 inches so that is example two now let's take a look at example three Scatter plot below shows a country's gross domestic product. It's a, one way to measure a country's wealth. And the number of medals it won in the 2010 Winter Olympics. What does the data tell you about the relationship between gross domestic product and the performance in the Winter Games? Well, we do have a least square regression line on there. And it does have a positive slope. We know that it's positive because our slope is positive right there. So we do know we have a positive relationship. And so countries with higher gross domestic product tend to win more medals. Countries with higher GDP tend to win more medals, at least in the winter games. But, or you could say however, but the relationship is not very strong. And how do I know that? If you notice on the graph, my R value is 0.6. So that you would not describe as a strong relationship. And I'm just going to put R is 0.6 in there. So that's kind of how we know it's not very strong. So it says, ooh, uh, somehow, well, I guess your notes must say Germany. One set of my notes say Japan. I think it's supposed to be Germany. Germany's GDP in 2012 was approximately 3.3 trillion. Based on this, how many medals would you predict they won in the 2012 Olympics? How confident are you in your prediction and why? So we're going to say X is equal to 3.3 trillion. So we want to take this equation that they gave me up here, slope of 1.89 times 3.3 plus 6.66. Okay, let's put that in, their calc in our calculator here. Let's clear this out. So I have 1.89 times 3.3 plus 6.66 and I get 12.89 medals doesn't make sense to talk about 